Okay. So uh, this session, uh, I titled it Reimagining RAN Through Open Innovation for 6G. And uh, here are some perspectives. We wanted to convey our thoughts as Redis is how do we see this journey of uh, going from 5G to 6G and uh, how we see this whole thing. So uh, talking about 6G, the vision of 6G as outlined by ITU, uh, there are certain aspects which are already defined, even though uh, the general belief is that 6G is not fully defined yet and uh, there is a whole lot of standardization effort that is to be taken up uh, in terms of the 3GPP standardization and so on, but the groundwork for 6G, the evolution into 6G has already been laid out and ITU, the premier organization, the world organization, which takes care of the global standards, uh, they already have done the first step in setting up or laying out a framework of 6G, which I tried to crystallize in this one slide. It was, it is a document available uh, with a detailed description, but in terms of the usage scenario and the capabilities of 6G, I'm not going to uh, read all of the content, but uh, if you look at it broadly, it is a, a natural evolution from the 5G capabilities, if you talk about it, and uh, all the elements of uh, the connectivity, higher throughput, and uh, uh, connecting massive number of devices, all those elements are already there. So there are capabilities which are present in 5G, which are going to be enhanced. There are totally around 15 capabilities which we talk about, and uh, maybe some five or five or six are going to be the new capabilities and uh, the others are going to be the enhancement over the 5G current capabilities. So you're going to see lower latency, higher throughput and all these things. And uh, But there is an element of focus on sustainability and connecting uh, any, anyone everywhere. And uh, we also have this AI native or application of AI at every level of processing in in RAN and core network. So the A elements are coming into place as well. And uh, of course, we are going to see a lot more focus on interoperability and openness in 6G as it is defined. So the four aspects which are taken to be the must have uh, are sustainability, connecting the unconnected, which is ubiquitous connectivity, and intelligence everywhere, which is applying artificial intelligence. And needless to say, the security and resilience of the network is going to be of focus. So with that vision set, where does it take us from 5G to 6G? So we are right now in 5G advanced releases in terms of the standardization, release 18, release 19 and onwards. And we are seeing that we will win. 3GPP and other organizations have already initiated the study items and the work items for doing the fundamental study and research required for enhancing the capabilities and evolving into 6G. From our perspective, we see this on four vectors. One is the air interface, which will become smart or smarter. And uh, AI native RAN, when I say that, AI will be there in every element of the RAN network, including the radio. And we're going to need innovative platforms which means hardware and the cloud platforms and all chipsets and so on. And the software aspects are going to be in focus as well to give us that tremendous capability to meet all the audacious goals of uh, 6G. So this is how we see as uh, ourselves lifting up from 5G to 6G. So one of the building blocks of 6G is going to be the smart air interface and without getting into the details and obviously everyone's, the question on everyone's mind is going to be what is, what is the frequency or the spectrum to be utilized that is yet to be finalized and there will be a few more years spent on that question even though the broad identification already has been made. But the air interface irrespective of the spectrum being used, the air interface is going to get more intelligent and there are two aspects which are worth highlighting which is the reflective intelligence surfaces and which is going to increase the amount of propagation that can be achieved with the waveforms. And uh, the other one is the integrated sensing and communication. This is a new capability again from a telecom point of view. And this is going to lead us into a much smarter air interface and the 
respective study items from both HC and 3GPP are already underway, and in fact, a NHC report is available, and then 3GPP has commissioned study work items already. So, we will see a lot more definition, crystallization happening in the AI interface, and uh, the AI native RAN, which is kind of interlinked with the previous topic of smarter AI interface. We're going to see AI getting applied in every element and every node and uh, every layer of the RAN network. And when we say this, right from the management orchestration, which is already present in 5G, some of these capabilities, including the fault correlation and predictive maintenance, but you expect to see more in terms of the RIG platforms, XAPs, RFs, even the CUDU, and uh, when it comes to the network level features, it will be the RRM, SON, slicing, and uh, massive MMO related optimizations, which are already use cases and advanced use cases being worked on within ORA in the context of 5G, but those will be enhanced further with the AI. And you will see the CU and DU getting smarter, enhanced with the AI capabilities, with uh, decisions on handover, traffic steering, some of the scheduling related uh, AI application, and uh, file algorithms, whether it's channel estimation and other problems. So we're going to see a whole lot of application and enhanced capabilities from the chipsets to uh, achieve, the, achieve those things. And in addition, we'll also be smartly leveraging the edge cloud, AI, edge cloud AI capabilities. So we're going to see a whole lot of metrics and KPIs being smartly leveraged for applying AI natively within RAN, and that's going to be one of the key pillars of 6G evolution. And uh, to deliver all these capabilities, which is high throughput and extremely low latency, we're going to see enhanced capabilities. We're going to need enhanced capabilities in base station hardware, radio, and underlying cloud infrastructure as well. So uh, this is a busy slide, or uh, a lot of details are there. But at a fundamental level, we're going to see the focus on energy efficiency simultaneously with the need to do all the processing with extremely low latency and high throughput. So we're going to need much more high, highly performance, high performance compute, and uh, all the enhanced network interface capabilities, hardware acceleration, and so on. And uh, same thing goes for your 6G radio as well, that electronics which was seen as complex in 5G, it's going to get even more complex in 6G radios. And with all the dynamic aspects of AI coming into picture, along with the essential need of uh, energy savings over there. So it's going to be very, very challenging to design platforms in 6G. And one underlying aspect, common aspect for all these things with the higher frequencies and lower latencies being achieved, being uh, targeted uh, for 6G, we are going to see an extremely challenging timing synchronization requirements all across the network, especially in RAM. And uh, that's going to add an, another dimension of challenge here in the platforms. So needless to say, all of these have to be equally supported at the edge cloud and the uh, cloud infrastructure. So all of this is going to present new challenges for us in building the appropriate infrastructure in 6G. A quick thing about the software side of the story, because this doesn't often get noticed or discussed, but the state of the art software that is required to deliver 6G RAN will have many attributes and uh, I'll try to highlight some of these here in this uh, chart. The essential ability to do multi-platform and multi-cloud kind of support, referring or uh, adhering to an open source or an open standards compliant architecture, scalable modules to perform and uh, scale up or down, scale out or in, and uh, all, the in all the elements of disaggregation, distributed processing, and reliability, security, and the core elements which are being emphasized in many of the events like the 5G challenge, having a secure S-bomb and extensibility of your upgrades and uh, the footprint of the software on the number of cores required and the total uh, processing record, hardware processing required, all of this is going to matter. So when we say maximizing the RAN software versatility, that's going to be truly tested in case of 6G RAN. And of course we need open interfaces, whether it's management or any DevOps kind of hooks, and uh, even the troubleshooting part, which is going to become extremely challenging. Until and unless we provide these interfaces, it's going to be very challenging to operate 6G. So we see these as the essential elements of the software, which has to be highly performant, 
and open and nimble. And uh, going by the theme of the day and what our uh, sessions have already covered, we are going to build 60 the open way, which means on the fundamentals of open RAN, this means having open interfaces, having the level of disaggregation that is needed, multi-vendor network solutions, hardware software decoupling, and being cloud native. And one element which is still happening, which uh, Alex highlighted in the first session, keynote session today, a consistent management and control um, which is required for us to uniformly operate the entire network irrespective of the vendors, that's going to be one key element of how we build or evolve into 6G. We see a lot of research and uh, collaboration activities already happening across the globe. I listed some of these things. Many of these regional alliances are working sometimes in isolation, sometimes in collaboration, and there is a need to synergize among all the uh, different communities and uh, consortiums that are already in play, and uh, the industry forums are also trying to do their bit, whether it's Next G Alliance or uh, ORAN Alliance and uh, even Small Cell Forum recently. So all of these have to converge, and of course, tapping into the research output which is happening as the primary input for uh, the evolution of 60, uh, especially the air interface, a lot of uh, good work which is being already done, investigations being done, and the research output. They all should be channeled into the standardization process to get the best definition of 60 that's going to be possible. And of course, the government agencies can have their inputs regarding the critical infrastructure perspective. And uh, the defense and other research priorities of government should also be taken care as we evolve into the 6G standards. And what we see as the go forward path in this whole journey of evolution is the combined effort that is required, the collaboration that is required, the synergies that is required to channel all of this into the standards and the appropriate reference design through forums like Linux Foundation. And we should leverage the open source components and uh, uh, all the capabilities which are there from the various open source projects wherever possible, especially many of the AML related things and the cloud and security aspects as well. And uh, as we saw in the previous slides, we have tremendous amount of challenges which are happening, which are going to be faced in the hardware and software both, which means we need a lot of innovation to happen at a silicon level and software level and cloud infrastructure level to make this base station uh, radio hardware ready for 6G. And that will need some of the funding support from the government as well. We will build platforms, reference designs, and the appropriate software capabilities, which should lead us to a much, I would say, cleaner, much more open 6G from where we are today. And that's our goal, and that should be our collective objective. Thank you for your time.